Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see Lyric Python and in that video we'll talk about descriptors. So what are those and how to use them? So let's start. First of all, I want to say that if you don't know about properties, so if you don't have no idea about property object in Python or if you have no idea about classes and what are those, that video is not for you. It's for the beginners and I don't often make those videos, but it still requires some knowledge beforehand. So let's start. Again, you need to know about properties because I will not explain those. I will maybe touch them a little bit, but I will not explain everything about them. And you also need to know about classes, objects, so object-oriented programming. And let's start. For example, we have an online shop where our users can make some orders. We have class order. And in that order, what do we have? We have product, which is like a string, for example, apple. So what product did our user ordered? And um, the second thing is amount. So amount is how many, how many of that product our user wants to order. So for example, we want to order five apples or we want to order two apples or we want to order zero apples. But there is a problem with that order is that we cannot order negative values. And of course, everything is all right when we put like four or five, so a positive value. But what if our user will create an order, so order, equals an order object and then we'll write order dot amount equals minus 10. So of course if we and let's write user ordered just to finish the program user ordered order dot amount um, and let's write order dot product and we will see if I put for example 10 we will see that user ordered 10 apple S but whatever. So now we can see that Everything is alright if our amount is positive. But what if we have some rules, in our case those rules is that our amount cannot be negative, that cannot be broken. In that case our code is of course broken because we can order minus 10 apples. So what does that mean? Our user will give the shop apples and will pay for them? Nobody knows. And of course that is a problem with the code. So how we can solve it? There are two ways of, or actually three ways, if we consider properties, descriptors, and another way. Uh, and uh, those ways are the most popular ones. So the first way that lots of you know about are setters. So what is a setter? You probably know about it. I'm not really sure, but if you worked with any other programming language that has objects, classes, and so on, then you know about setters. So a setter is a function that will set the property of your object a variable for your object so it will just run some calculations so run some ifs switch cases or whatever and then it will set the value for your property for example we can have a function set amount which will accept self of course and then it will accept value so what we can do in that set amount if value is less than zero or less than or equals to zero then what we can do is just simply raise value error or else so if our amount is um, zero or is negative, then we raise value error. But else, what we can do is simply put self amount as a value. So now instead of just putting uh, order amount equals minus 10, what we can do is use set amount, for example, 10. Let's run our calculations or our code and you can see that everything is all right with user order 10 apples. If our amount is positive, everything is all right. But if I will try to put minus 10 and I run my code again, as you can see, we receive value error as the result. So that is very, very bad. But what is the problem with that approach in Python? Because in Python, they'll have encapsulation. So what is that? Encapsulation is a specific terminology. So it's a specific idea in object-oriented programming, a very cool idea, but we don't have that in Python. Well, we kind of have that. So what is encapsulation? Again, I can write it to you, uh, write that word encapsulation. Encapsulation means the protection of your variables from the outer world. For example, in our case, amount cannot be negative. And if we want to protect our variable, our amount variable, what we can do is have a barrier. In our case, it will be set amount that will mm, remove the ability of our users, of other classes, of the code outside of the class order scope to change the value of that variable. So for example, every time I as a user or I as a programmer who writes or who uses that order class, we need to change the variable of amount. So the amount variable, I'll need to use set amount function. 
And in other languages, that works perfectly fine. For example, if you worked with Java, C++, C, C Sharp, so any C-like language, except for JavaScript maybe, then you know, or do we have it? No, no, we don't have it in JavaScript, but you know that we have different scopes for variables. We have public variables, private variables, protected variables, and others. But in Python, we don't really have that. So what do I mean by protected, private, if you have never worked with other languages rather than Python? So private variable will literally ban you from setting the amount with the order amount like that. So it will be impossible for you. But in Python, we can still do it. So what do I mean by that is that if, for example, I, as a user who wrote that order class, will call set amount, and I'll write minus 10, yeah, I'll receive an error, everything will be all right from that, from that point of view. But still, what I can do is just simply write amount equals minus 10. And that's it. In other languages with more strict encapsulation, we will not, would not be able to do that. But in Python, we still can. And that's the most, or that's the biggest problem with, with normal setters in Python. But that is not the only issue with them. The second one is that we can, or we can make it better. Yeah, we literally can make it better. So in terms of the code readability, set amount is not that great. Because what we are doing right here, first of all, we are creating a, sep, uh, a spare function for our setter, for our variable. And if we follow that logic, so if we have setters, then we need to have getters. Getters, for those of you who don't know, is the function that functions that return the value of our variable. So self amount like that. And that is only one variable. So we wrote how many? Uh, 7 to 13. We wrote five is it five? Yeah, five lines of code for just one variable. That is not all right, because we don't want to, first of all, we don't want to mess up our code with lots of similar functions. And second of all, it's not that great, because as a user who uses order class, so when I mean as a user, I mean as a programmer. So if, for example, you re write a library and then some somebody else uses it, or you can be literally a user. So as a user, I don't want to write order.setAmount, order.getAmount. It's not readable at all. What I want to do is write order.amount to get the value and order.amount equals to something to set the value. And I need to run all the validations during that setting phase. So during that setting with equal sign. So that's what I want to do. And of course, in Python, we have the tools that can help us with that. The first tool that we have and of course, in Python, you should never write setters. So there are there are like exceptions, but typically you would be better writing one of the things that I'll show you show to you right now. So the first exception of how we can, or the first thing that can help us write more readable, more beautiful setters and getters are properties. So property is like an object that will use setters and getters, but instead of writing the names of the functions, what you can do is literally write property, so decorator property, then amount. Here you can write amount with an underscore before it, amount here, and what you can do is copy that function, put it somewhere here, or sorry, somewhere here. I'll explain everything, but give me just a minute amount setter and uh, yeah, I think I should do it. No, what's the problem? Amount setter, uh, yeah, because we need to use amount here. So what we did there, there I used a property. And as I said before watching that video, you need to know about properties because I'm not explaining what that code does. Well, I, I will touch on that, but I will not explain everything. So in terms of encapsulation in Python, we don't have a really strict encapsulation, but what we have is naming conventions. So naming convention is like, how you should name a variable, but it only works for the programmers. So only, um, let me give you an example. I'm not a native English speaker, but still I can speak the language. And there are some rules that I can break while I speak. Yeah, so I think you heard lots of those, lots of, my, uh, lots of mistakes in my speech, but still, mm, I know lots of rules. And because of that, I can follow those rules. And if I follow them, everything is all right. But if I break them, somebody, can misunderstand me. And because of that, we will have a problem. So the same is um, 
with Python naming conventions. So what we have here is underscore amount equals to something. Everything works great if the programmers will not touch that variable out um, on the outer scopes of class order. So what do I mean by that? Whenever you write order amount, every good programmer in Python will understand that, okay, I should never do that because that variable is protected. So protected means that we have an underscore before the name of the variable. That means that you should never um, work with the variable on the instant. We should never work with the variable except for the time you work with it inside of your class. So that's how it works. And uh, because of that, lots of programmers will understand, okay, I don't need to touch that variable, but still some of the programmers will not get that and they will do it like that. So that's the problem with Python encapsulation. So we have it in some sense, we have it. Like that is encapsulation in Python, but still it's just for the programmers. It's only a naming convention. In other languages, when you talk about encapsulation, it's really, really strict. So you literally have errors, like exceptions. But uh, in Python, what we can do is literally like user ordered minus 10 apples because I just put an underscore before the amount, before the amount word, before the amount variable name. And that's the problem. But with properties, what we can do? Still, there are lots of things that can go wrong. And I think that naming conventions are really, really great in Python because encapsulation would really like would really 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 set lots of things encapsulation would be bad in python from my point of view there are lots of philosophical topics on that but um, or th philosophical things questions issues and so on but i think that python without encapsulation is better because we still have those tools for the encapsulation but yeah we have tools for the encapsulation, but still those tools can be broken because there is no like real encapsulation. That is only for the programmers, but still I think that everything is all right with the um, encapsulation right now. Maybe we should add like, I don't know, private, private amount, public amount, but no, 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 I don't think that that's a good idea right now because we have properties, we have descriptors and yeah, oh, descriptors. So we are already, how many? We're already 12 minutes in the video and I have yet, not yet started talking about descriptors, but uh, whatever. Let me just explain what properties are. Property is like a separate variable, mm -hmm. a separate object, if you want me to say it like that, because property is an object, but we use it as a decorator right here. So property is a separate object that will change the value of a different variable. But whenever we want to interact with that different variable, so in our case, different variable is underscore amount, we need to write dot amount. So as you can see here, I'm using property and define or def amount is the getter for that property. So it literally just returns the value. But amount setter is a setter for that amount. And as you can see, it sets the value. And now if I write order dot amount minus 10, as you can see, I write it without the underscore. I can see that we erase value error because my order amount is negative. But if I write order amount as 10, everything will be all right. And yes, yeah, still we can break that um, encapsulation just using the, or not encapsulation, we can break the properties by just using the underscore amount. And that's bad. But that is not the problem with properties. That is the problem with programmers who literally break those rules because I'm not sure, but I think order amount, I think if I put it right there. Yeah, as you can see, Python, my PyCharm, my PyCharm literally says, access to protected member of amount, access to protected, to a protected member amount of a class. So we should not do that. And yeah, so yeah, it depends on the programmers, not on the tools that Python gives you. Still, it would be nice to have a real encapsulation, but I don't think that it would fit Python. For some, again, it's a very philosophical question, as I said. For some cases, it would be really, really nice to have a um, real encapsulation, but for others, it would be really, really bad because Python is a really, flexible language and I think that is the biggest advantage of it. So yeah, if you want me to talk about encapsulation, talk about all of other philosophical questions in Python, then just leave a comment and I will talk about that. But now let's talk about descriptors. So why do we need those if we have properties? So again, property is just a variable that will change a separate variable. So in our case, we can change variable amount, but literally we change underscore amount or any other variable. And because of that, what we can do is run some um, run some code, run some validations. Why we change amount variable? Because literally order amount equals 10 is the same as using 
order dot and that function that function amount setter so yeah it's literally the setter but the only difference is that we change a separate variable there are lots of other languages that exploit the same pattern but the problem with properties in python is that we have lots of lots of lots of variables that use the same logic use the same validators but if we use properties then we cannot write one simple object that will contain all of the validators all of the things that we need that is the first problem the second problem is that we we are really really constrained in terms of um, object-oriented programming so we cannot mm, inherit one property from another we cannot copy one property to another we cannot uh, abstract one property for, to another and it's really 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 complicated to have other functions what for example what if for example we have amount validators that run for you have for example 100 validators or you have 20 validators you cannot write all of them in that amount function and yeah literally you just have two well actually three or even four functions and you don't have an object a separate object that you can reuse that you can mm, inherit that you can abstract from other um, parts of it and uh, because of that what we have are descriptors so with descriptors i will delete that code with descriptors what we have is a class 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 mm, let's write let me write positive number like that so descriptor is a class actually it's a protocol a very interesting idea which is also very very mm, well Im implemented in python so positive number now is not a descriptor but how we can make it a descriptor so what is a descriptor descriptor is a reusable class that will run some that will have some functions that will allow us to use different variables run different validations and do some cool stuff i don't really know how to explain i don't re i actually don't know how to explain them in one sentence so yeah that's that's my explanation but you understand everything as i move on so what we have here instead of amount equals four what can i write is amount equals positive number again positive number is just a class but if i want to make it an object i need to create it with parentheses so yeah call init i think everybody knows about it but then what we have in descriptors are mm, some magic functions so again there are two patterns in python that are really well implemented the first one is inheritance so everybody knows about inheritance is when we inherit from one object yeah we inherit we all inherit from object i think you know about that so object is like the main the parent of all of the classes in python but also we have you know, protocols so protocols are much better for some cases as inheritance is much better for others so protocols are when we use the same names for different functions and because of that we can reuse different classes without having one ancestor so what do i mean by that if we want to create a descriptor what we can do is we don't need to inherit from desk from property or from whatever what we need to do is literally just create a new function called get so as you can see that is a magic function magic function in python is a function that starts with two underscores and ends with two underscores as well so as you can see what we have here is a magic function that accepts self obviously then instance and owner for now it's just print instance and owner so we'll see what are those and what is a protocol again protocol is a very very important topic in python and it's very very well implemented um, design pattern so protocol is when we have mm, the same name for the function so as you can see get is the get is like a magic function so yeah but different objects implement different mm, different objects implement different uh, logic for that function and because of that because of we have the same name for the function for different objects so for example what i can do is create class negative or neg let me just create neg and then i'll get the same function so as you can see neg and positive number both implement get function and because of that what i can do is literally i can create neg object so for example a neg and then i can call get on it or if i want to do or if i want to change something i can literally just change positive number and because of that i have like the same names for the functions i can still use get function here so that is the most powerful thing about protocols very very interesting topic and if you want me to elaborate on that then of course write that down in the comments but um positive number what is that it's a descriptor so descriptor again is just like a property but we can reuse it 
So as you can see what I'm doing right here is I create amount as a positive number. And now let me just get that order amount here. So instead of just doing it like that, I'll just print order order dot amount. Let me run it. As you can see, what we have here is main order object at some address and class main order. So what are those? Those are instance and owner. Instance and owner are the values that are provided to get. Typically, we don't provide any values to get. So getter, again, get is a getter function for that descriptor, which returns the value of a variable of our object. Typically, we don't provide values, but those are necessary for our descriptor. So what are those? Instance is the object that contains our descriptor. So again, it's not a class, it's an object. For example, if I create an order on the 13th line, order will be an instance. So what I can do is literally write return instance product, product, and now if I run my code, oh, let me just, I don't, I don't see anything. Where is my, uh, let me just do it like that. Okay, so if I run my code right, right now, I can see Apple. So here, as you obviously can see, we return the value of our order. If I change it, for example, apple2, again, apple2. So as you can see, instance is the object that is, um, the yeah, instance is the object that is used, or sorry, instance is the object that contains our descriptor. So yeah, that is the whole idea of instance. And why do we need it? Because we will, again, descriptor will not change anything in it. Descriptor will change the values of the order class. I have never said that and yeah, again, was really, really, yeah, whatever, don't mind. But yeah, positive number, again, any descriptor does not change anything inside of it. It will change the values of our object. And therefore we need that object. And that object is the instance, the first argument, which is provided in get, so our getter function. The second argument is owner. Owner is the class. So again, instance is that order, so the object, but owner is the class. So that order. And that is just, just it. So that is our descriptor get. So what do we can do with it? With it, we can return some values. For example, what if I will set up amount variable like that amount equals 10. And positive number descriptor will simply return the, or positive number will constrain the negative numbers for that specific variable, but it will return it using, uh, it will return it in getter. So what I can do right here is use instance dot amount and as you can see they underline the PyCharm underlines it because still I access a protected member of class but I'll show you why do I need to do that in just a minute so now if I run it as you can see I received 10 so that is the amount variable right here but what I can do further is set that variable so now if I'll just try to set it order amount equals minus 10 everything will be all right as you can see minus 10 it's not all right because our logic is uh, broken, but what I can do is use set function right here. So set function is another magic function that will, instead of returning the value, will set it. So our variable inside of our instance will be set to value. So typically set is like order dot set or um, how do I write it? How do I write it? No, 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 it's not order. It's positive number dot set so self, then order, then value. So as you can see, yeah, if I write it like that, so order amount and the second line are the same. So yeah, we need to provide self here. So self, it's like just the argument for uh, any object. But yeah, I, th I think you know about that. What I can do is I just like do it like that. Okay, so now um, 18th line and 19th line are the same. So order amount equals minus 10 is the same as using positive number dot set order minus 10. So it literally is the same. But what is the cool thing about setters is that we can, and properties and therefore descriptors, is that we can use order.amount equals to something without even calling that set function. And again, instance is the order, so the object that contains our descriptor, value is the value that we provide here. Mm. Yeah, in getter we have also, we also have owner, so it's the class, so like literally the class. It's not an object, it's the class. Instance is an object, owner is a class. So here we don't have owner, but yeah, whatever. We don't need it anyway. And um, what we can do here is use self amount equals value, or not, sorry, not self amount. We don't use self because again, it's 
a big problem. And uh, yeah, it was a typo from my side, but we don't use self because if you, if you will use self, what you actually do is you change the value inside of positive number. But again, as I said, when we use descriptors, we don't change the values inside of our descriptors. We change those values inside of the objects that contains contain those descriptors. So in our case, we need to change the value in order. And therefore, we need to use instance, not self, in our setter and therefore in our getter. That's how it works. Now, we set our value to value. So to value that is provided. And if I run my code now, as you can see, let's, let me just write amount as zero here so we will see the result. As you can see, it's zero now. So if I set order amount as 10, then order amount and therefore order underscore amount will be 10. Because what we literally do here is we kind of have a link. So positive number is a link to underscore amount variable. And yeah, because of that, we if we change amount as 10, instance underscore amount is changed as well. That's how it works. And yeah, that's the whole idea. So if we can, or if we run the code right now, as you can see, we receive 10 and everything works all right. However, there is a problem. There is a problem that we access a protected member of our class. That variable is protected. And that is the problem. Again, the problem is, as I said, we don't do that. We are great programmers, we don't do that. And uh, what I can do is remove that variable. But what, what do I do next? What do I do next? Of course, I can use instance amount like that and everything will be all right with it because now instead of creating that variable or instead of using mm, a variable with, uh, so a variable that is protected, what I can do is I can just simply put an underscore after it. Because again, I just can't use normal amount because amount, normal amount is a link to the separate variable. So I need two variables in order to use descriptors. The first variable is the descriptor itself, so amount in our case, and the second one is the the internal variable, if we can say it like that, that is used by the descriptor. So in our case, it's the amount underscore. Again, you can use underscore amount in that case, but it's not advised because still you can mislead lots of programmers. So underscore before the name of the variable means that you have a protected, a protected variable that should not or should never be used outside of the class scope. But if we are using amount or any uh, variable name and then we append underscore at the end, that means that our the name amount is just taken and we need to use another name. So we just simply put underscore at the end. And now if I run my code, everything will be all right. So as you can see 10 and yeah, everything works. So we have order amount. And if I'll put my breakpoint here and I'll run it in the bug, if I'll go to order, as you can see, we have amount as 10 and amount under, not under, yeah, amount underscore, sorry, as 10 as well. So everything works fine. Now we use our positive number descriptor in order to set another variable amount in our order object. And what I can simply do is use if value equal or less than zero, then raise value error less or equals to zero. And now if I run my code one more time, everything will be all right at first, but then if I put minus 10 as the order amount, as you can see, value error. So now we simply made a descriptor that will work with setters and getters for our amount. Now we can easily check if our value is less than zero or if everything is all right with it. Of course, we can check for different things. We can even run uh, like any validations. For example, what we can do is run instance amount multiplied by 10 here as a getter because those are not restricted to only like get or set a variable. No, descriptors are very, very powerful because we can those are literally separate classes that are used as a variable. And yeah, because of that, you can do whatever you want. So yeah, but that is the, again, I can elaborate on that topic, but that is the most simple, the most simple description of descriptors. But there is a problem with that code right now, because that problem is, as I said, descriptors are reusable. So I could have wrote everything with a simple property as I did it before. So I wrote it with property at first, but then I moved to descriptor. However, there is a problem with descriptor with our descriptor right now. We solved the issue with the property that it cannot be replicated. So a property is like a property. It's like in one, um, it's like a singleton, nothing. If you need another pro or a separate property with the same logic, then you, what you need to do is copy your code. Of course, we don't copy our code because we are 
we are great programmers. And uh, because of that, we use descriptors. So we can reuse our variables over or our logic over and over again. And what, for example, if we added a cost uh, value to our order? So now we have cost. Cost should be positive as well. But there is a problem with cost right now. So again, if I run minus 10, as you can see, the validations ran successfully. And the same is with cost. But there is a problem. If I put cost as 10, but I put order dot amount as 20, whenever I write my cost, I will see 20. So why is that? Because as I said, descriptors, they do not use variables inside of them. They change the variables inside of our objects. And if you can see the problem with that code, that's great. Because the problem is that we change the same variable. So if I'll put my debug breakpoint right there and I'll run my code in debug, as you can see, we have order and still we should have had amount, amount underscore, cost, cost underscore, but we don't have it. Why? Because positive number does not have any dynamic, um, dynamic value or dynamic name for the uh, variable, for the internal variable. We only change the amount underscore and that is very, very bad. Because whenever we want to use anything, so what I can do is just, I can simply write, oh, sorry, order cost. Yeah, let's write it right there. Order cost equals 10, for example. Look at the values of amount, amount, and cost. Boom, and all of those become 10. Because simply, we don't have anything. We don't have a separate variable for cost. Amount and cost share the same, the same value because we literally, in setter and getter, we literally have amount underscore. But if we want to have a dynamic name, there are two ways of how we can do it. The first way is really, really simple is we can have init because again, remember that that is a simple class and we can provide where we can provide values here. So what you can do is you can have uh, where var name. Yes, you can see var name here and those become yellow. So we need to provide uh, yeah parameter var name unfilled, but the better way of doing it is using set name function. Maybe you saw it before, but set name function, what it does, it gives you the name. So it gives you the L value. Again, L values are the amount and cost R and R values are positive number, positive number. So set name will give you the L value of our descriptor. So let me just simply print, print owner and name. And uh, let me just remove all that code or comment out that code. Let, let me write it or run it right now, sorry. And as you can see what we have here, when we create our descriptors, we call set name function and we print owner and name. So owner is class order, class order here as well, but the name is amount and cost. So amount and cost. What does that mean? That means that name parameter inside of our set name function is the name of the variable itself. So now it's a really, really cool stuff because not lots of languages implement that because it's literally very, very complicated to implement that. And here as a name, we have amount and cost. So therefore what we can do is we can have self var name equals to name plus underscore. And let me just simply print my self var name. Let me run it. As you can see, cost and amount. So now we have Again, we don't have variables yet because yeah, we, st we still did nothing. We still change the amount here and we get the amount here. But now we have the right variable names for our descriptors. And what I can do here is instead of using instance amount value, what I can do is use set or sorry, set other instance um, instance self var name value. So if you don't talk about set other function, those to uh, those two lines are literally the same. The only difference is that we can provide any string as the second argument in setutter. So if you want to write instance dot x equals value, you can literally write setutter. It's not advised in normal, um, in normal, in normal code because it's literally easier to write instance dot equals something. But if you have a string. Again, we have a string, so self var name is just a string. And because of that, what we can do in Python that is a really, really powerful stuff is we can literally write set adder instance self var name comma value. And now we can remove that and 
what we are doing right there is instead of setting amount underscore or any underscore, we set the name of the variable that is right there. So for every descriptor, we have a separate variable. And yeah, instead of here, what we can do is literally get adder instance self var name. So get adder instance self var name is literally the is literally that instance var name. But yeah, but still, why we use set adder and get adder? Because we have var name as a string. Again, name is a string. So var name is a string also. And because of that, what we can do is provide strings as the arguments in get adder and set adder. And therefore, we can set a new value for that string for that instance, or we can get the value for from that instance with the self var name, name of the variable. Yeah, that's the whole point. And now what we can do is we can change the values. We can change the values. So order cost, order amount. Let me run it. And as you can see, order cost is 10, order amount is 20, but still order cost is uh, stays as 10 because now Mm, if we see it right here, we have cost underscore and amount underscore. So those are two different variables because we use set name. And yeah, I think that is the last thing that I'll discuss or I'll tell you today because we already are 36 minutes in that video. So yeah, descriptors are very, very powerful and they're most powerful. Mm, the most powerful difference from properties or from setters and getters is that they are really, really readable. So if you write a descriptor and you then you just fold it like that, then what you need to do is write order cost, order amount, and still every every of your descriptor will of your descriptors will run all the validations that you need. But the second most important thing that we have with descriptors that we don't have with norm, normal properties is that descriptors are reusable. So I can literally write one, two, three, four whatever and the logic will stay the same of course we also have things like inheritance because we can inherit that positive number from another class but that is not the topic for that video because that is was uh, or that was just the introduction for the descriptors so that is how they work and yeah thank you for the watching my name is andrew i hope you liked it subscribe to my channel like that video comment what you want to see next and good luck